Well, hi everybody, I'm Greg, and I was a teenage projectionist. Well, it's not that scary, but when I was a kid, I used to run the movies at a local multiplex. We had six projectors, six screens, you know, six auditoriums, and so I ran the movies. And I learned a lot about different movie formats and things like aspect ratios and Dolby stereo sound and all this sort of thing. Uh, stuff that at the time, mainly the only people who really knew a lot about that were people making movies or people running projectors. But today, people, just the general population knows a lot more about that sort of stuff. But uh, I wonder if we know as much as we need to know in order to set up our movie home theater systems correctly and, and all that. So I want to uh, tell you a little bit about what I know and maybe this will help you out. Uh, I'm going to do a series of videos, talk about aspect ratios, talk about sound systems, talk about uh, anamorphic video, this sort of thing. Uh, but I'm going to start off by, I think, what's the most important foundation for us, it's aspect ratios. So you've maybe heard this term before, but what am I talking about, aspect ratio? Quite simply, it's a mathematical expression to describe the shape of a picture frame. So, if something has an aspect ratio of one to one, meaning the height is the same as the width, then you got a perfect square. If it's a, a two to one width to height ratio, then it's twice as wide as it is tall. Um, as far as motion pictures go, there are some standard aspect ratios. Uh, for the first probably 50 years of the motion picture industry, really the first part of the 1900s, almost every motion picture was shot with an aspect ratio of four by three. Four wide, three high. So if you had uh, a movie screen that was three feet high, it would be four feet wide. If it was 15 feet high, it would be 20 feet wide. See the same ratio happening there. And when uh, they made movies like The Wizard of Oz and Citizen Kane and Gone with the Wind and It's a Wonderful Life, they were all filmed with that four by three aspect ratio. When television was invented, they kept the same four by three aspect ratio because most motion pictures were shot that way. Um, but in the beginning of television, the people that were making content for television were not necessarily the same people that were making Hollywood movies. And there was a certain rivalry there, and the sense of competition was something that the movie studios were worried about. Uh, they were afraid people wouldn't go to the movies anymore, they'd just be watching television shows at home. So Hollywood tried to offer things in the theaters that television could not do at the beginning. At the beginning, television couldn't do color. Television couldn't do stereo sound. Television couldn't do a widescreen picture. So in the 1950s primarily, that's when they really started to push these other technologies. Color, stereo sound, widescreen technologies. And there were a lot of different widescreen technologies invented at the beginning. Uh, there was CinemaScope, something called VistaVision, uh, weird funny names like Technoscope and Todd AO and Cinerama and these were all different technical processes going on to give you an experience that you couldn't get at home. Uh, eventually a lot of those sort of fell into the realm of just kind of being gimmicks and you know like 3D also was one of them and and they really didn't catch on for the mainstream movies. Uh, back in the 50s and 60s. So by the time you get into the 1970s, you really only had a couple standard aspect ratios for motion picture films in the theater. And one was a 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio, and the other was known as Cinemascope or Panavision, and this was a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio, or some people simplify that to just 2.4 to 1. So you got this really wide frame for your westerns, you're going to see the cattle drive and you know the roundup and all this, and you got this super wide panorama and you go to the theater and you say, wow, that's so much better than television, I could never get that panoramic wonderful wide view like I can get at the theaters. So different aspect ratios for different purposes. Now, let's say you had that big CinemaScope western that you wanted to show on television. But the frame is a different size, so your 2.4 to 1 frame is more is like this, okay? That's what it looks like. And you want to fit this onto a TV screen, which only has 
that four by three aspect ratio. There were three ways that they generally tried to make those cinemascope movies fit onto the television screen. And one way was to just take that wide image and squeeze it, squeeze it horizontally. So it just, it just fits. But now you'll notice that, wow, you know, I'm really tall and skinny. <laughs> There's something not quite right with this picture. So that was not the most preferred way to, uh, to show these wide movies on the TV screen that was only 4x3. Uh, another way would just be to chop the edges off and just show what's in the middle. Uh, but, you know, that didn't work out so well because what if the director decided to really utilize the wide frame and someone's over here talking and he's talking to the guy over there and then uh, but if you're only going to see what's in the middle, then, you, you know, what happens with these two guys that are, that are talking to each other? And uh, so, yeah, that didn't work out so well. And sometimes they'd maybe pan and, and scan. So, like, they would electronically move, move the, uh, what they're showing on TV. So I could be over here talking, and then as I move over to this side and continue talking, then, you know, you'd have that kind of artificial looking electronic pan and scan. Um, so that became kind of the most popular way to show these wide movies on the old standard definition television screen. And the third way, which a lot of the movie connoisseurs preferred, was what was called letterboxing. So you take this wide frame and you, uh, you just shrink it so that it'll fit on that old standard definition uh, frame. And now, now you can see everything over to this extreme and over to this extreme, that's great. But some people didn't like the way that now you had this wasted space, these black bars up there and, and, and down here. And you know, they didn't like, they wanted their whole TV screen to be filled and, and these black bars were driving people nuts. So, but but the, the movie connoisseurs who were collecting movies on like Laserdisc and stuff, they liked Letterbox because they wanted to see this whole wide frame that was available in the theaters. And um, yeah, so a bit of a, a conflict there between two different mindsets on how to show or what they prefer rather to watch these wide movies on television. All right, so now um, you should know that, okay, your old standard definition television is the 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio, which is a simplification of the 4 by 3 ratio. And, uh, but then, you know, engineers in the 70s or 80s or whenever it was decided, let's invent something better than television. Let's invent a high definition television, which has a higher resolution picture, more detail, uh, more movie-like experience. And so when they invented high definition television, they decided to go ahead and include in the specifications a wider frame than 4x3. And so they got thinking about all the different aspect ratios out there for theatrical movies and, and even still camera pictures. Uh, from 35 millimeter, the aspect ratio was three by two. And what would be a good compromise between all these different frame shapes that we've already established? And someone came up with 16 by nine being, you know, an acceptable compromise there. Also, if you're pretty good at math, you may have noticed that 16 by nine is four times four by three times three. Four squared by three squared. So instead of four by three, it's now 16 by nine. Interesting there. And I think that from an engineering standpoint, that makes it easier for some of these technologies to be adapted from the standard frame to the high definition frame. And also, if you want one monitor that can show the two different aspect ratios and, and have a, just a button that you press for different aspect ratios, by squaring those numbers, I think that it makes it easier for the electronic engineering to, to happen there. And I'm not an engineer, so, you know, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, so now you've got 16 by 9, and, well... All right, anyway, that's a little bit about aspect ratio. So what I want to tell you about next is what do we mean when we say anamorphic? So watch for that. As soon as I have that video ready, I'll put a little link down here with a response from me, and uh, you'll be able to find out what do I mean by anamorphic both in the movie theaters and also anamorphic video or 16 by 9 enhanced video? Yeah, that'll be the next lesson and I'll see you then.